everybody, Michael here from Musea. So we've talked to a lot of you online, uh, customer support over the phone, and some of you struggle with math. So today we are going to walk you through some math. We're going to talk about mat sizing, how to properly calculate mat sizes starting from the print size up, and then also if you already have a frame, going from the frame size down. Let's get nerdy. Okay, so where we're going to start is very basic. So we're going to start with uh, an 8x10 mat that is cut for a 5x7 print. So the biggest misconception that we have with people that we talk to is uh, they will only do part of the formula in terms of determining the print and mat size. So they'll take the 5 inch side of their print uh, and they take the 8 inch side of the mat so they'll go 8 minus 5 and that gives you 3 and they will assume that that means that you have a 3 inch border around the entire uh, print uh, but if you measure it you can see that it's not so it's actually an inch and a half so what you're actually doing is the print since the print goes in the middle you're splitting that 3 inch measurement onto both sides so you have an inch and a half here and an inch and a half here. And it's the same for the height. So we have a, it's a five by seven, so this is your seven inch on the long side, and it's an eight by 10 mat, so this is your 10 inches on the long side. So 10 minus seven is also three, but you have to divide it by two because of the two sides. So it's also an even inch and a half on top and bottom. So your formula for matting math is uh, you will take the just one dimension, so let's take the short side, so you'll take uh, the 8 minus 5 equals, and that would be 3, and then you divide that by 2, and that's how much the border width is on uh, the opposite sides uh, of the short side. Alright, so this is one of the other common sizes that we have at Musea. So we have an 11 by 14 mat, we have an 8 by 10 print, so let's just run through this one more time just so you can see how this works again. So we have a 14 inch long mat and then you have a 10 inch long print. So you'll just take 14 minus 10 equals 4, but then you have to divide it by 2 so you'll get 2 inches on the left and then 2 inches on the right. And then if you do that for the short side, you've got 11 inches on the mat, 8 inches on the print, so that uh, 11 minus 8 is 3, divide it by 2, and you get an inch and a half on the top and bottom. Okay, so now that we've gone through the matting formula, we're going to talk to you a little bit real quick about um, mats that have an uneven border and then mats that have an even border. That way you can make an educated decision uh, for you and your client, or you can just make an aesthetic decision uh, for yourself and how you like to frame things uh, and mat things. So on the left we have the 8x10 print and 11 by 14 mat, which is a very common pairing. We do it every day here at the lab, but it does give you slightly uneven borders. So the top and bottom is an inch and a half, and your sides are going to be two inches. So there's a half inch width difference between the two sides. Uh, this mat is a 7x10 print, but it ends up being a two inch border all the way around. So traditionally, with framing, uh, an even border is considered uh, more pleasing, it's considered more custom, it's considered more high-end. An uneven border can sometimes come across as not as professional, not as custom, because you're, uh, it's just not even, so it's just a little asymmetrical, so it's not quite as visually pleasing uh, between an even border, which is just completely neutral. Uh, in, in his presentation. So uh, let's just do the math real quick on the even border and I can show you how easy it is to calculate and let's go backwards this time. We'll start with the mat size and work down to see what print size we need. So we know we want a 2 inch border so we take the 11 by 14 mat because we know let's say we have a frame that's 11 by 14 we need it to fit in that. So you'll take 14 uh, minus four, not minus two, because you've got two sides. So you, 
it has to, you have to double it. So you'll take 14 minus 4, so that gives you your 10 inch length on one side of the print. And then on the short side, you have an 11 inch uh, tall mat here, minus 4, so 11 minus 4 again because you have the two sides and you want a 2 inch border. You get 11 minus uh, 4 is 7, and so your print would be 7 by 10, and that will give you a 2 inch perfectly even border all the way around. So we want to go ahead and show you uh, a little more of an extreme example of uh, print and matte combination that is uneven versus a, a print combination that is an even border but it's just a thicker border. Uh, so you can make that decision if that's something that you like. So this is an example of uh, the print is smaller than the matte but just because it's smaller doesn't mean it's always going to look great. Um, it can fit but uh, it can get kind of an extreme look at times, and so some people think this is uh, not as professional looking because the care wasn't taken to make it even, it's not as custom looking, um, and it can, you get fewer support, you have a little less support on the right and left because it is a thinner width on the mat board. So this is an example of a 12, uh, a 12 by 18 print in a 16 by 20 mat. Um, and this up at the top is a eight by 12, print in a 16 by 20 mat. So uh, the math real quick on this one, uh, the even one is uh, you have 16 on the short side minus 8 on the short side of the print. Um, so 16 minus 8 is 8 divided by 2, so you have 4 inches on each side. Uh, it's the same for the long side, 12 inch for the print, 20 inch for the mat. 20 minus 12 is 8 divided by 4. Um, or divided by two, and then you get so you get four inches on both sides. So this is an even four inch mat. It is thicker, more substantial, uh, a little more of a negative space look. Uh, you see that a lot in museums and art galleries. Uh, and this is um, thinner, obviously. So if you have a 18 inch long print and a 20 inch mat, so you have 20 minus 18. The default is to think, oh, that's a two inch mat border, but it's really only an inch on the sides, so it's very thin. And that's as thin as we ever suggest going as an inch. We don't like going any thinner than that here at Musea. Uh, and then if you have 12 inches by 16, uh, that's four inch difference divided by two because the two sides, so you, get, you have a two inch uh, mat border. So this is twice as wide as this side. So you have a one inch versus a two inch. And so when you get doubling, when the widths are double, um, or half as thin as the thickest, Either way, you get a really uneven uh, border, which uh, some people like or don't like. Uh, we could also show you here, and we'll show you in another video actually, uh, where you could take something like this and you can make it um, more uneven on purpose, uh, which we would call bottom weighting. And it's a very creative look, and it's a way to kind of get around this, but add a little more control into it, and give it a really professional artsy gallery look. All right, so hopefully by now you guys got a really good handle on the math that's required to calculate mat border width. So we're gonna show you just a couple frame examples on uh, mat border width, so you can kind of help determine how wide you would want a mat border uh, for your frame. So in this example, uh, we have a 20 by 30 print. So typically we say what we do is we start with the print size and work out, and so the frame size ends up becoming custom um, but everything we talked about today, you could also take the frame size and work backwards. It's the same math, you just work backwards with it. So, but in this example, we have a 20 by 30 print with a four inch mat border, so it's even. And typically when you go, the bigger the print is, the bigger your mat border you can do, and it would still look proportional and balanced. So this one we did the four inch mat border, um, so what the frame actually would be, would be a 28 by 38, because you have to double the sides. So if you've got 20 inches on the short side, you've got 4 inches plus 20 plus another 4 on the other side. So that gives you 28. And the same for if we go vertical, you've got 4 inches on the bottom plus 30 for the print, and then plus another 4 at the top, so that's 38. So this, the interior of this frame is 28 by 38. And anytime, just as a tip, when you're, people refer to frame size, it's always the interior measurement. So it's never the outside measurement. So if somebody says a 20, 
eight by 38 frame, it's the interior measurement here. It's not measuring from the outside of the frame to the other outside of the frame. That's a totally different measurement. And it's not really relevant to the mat size that fits inside of it. So that's gonna show you a, um, we're gonna show you a two inch mat frame next so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so this is a frame uh, that has a two inch mat border all the way around the print. So we have a 12 by 12 print and a 16 by 16 frame. Uh, so you've got 12 inches, 2 plus 2, so it gives you 16, and then you have 2 plus 12 plus 2, also gives you 16. This is a 12 by 12 print, but when you're bumping into like uh, about a 16 by 20 print or larger, that's a great time to think about extending your matte border width to maybe 3 inch border or a 4 inch border, especially when you get into like, a, like we had in the previous segment of a 20 by 30 print, 24 by 30, something like that then you can really start pushing that four inch border width just as a general guideline. So smaller prints like 11 by 14, 12 by 12, those kind of sizes, a two inch border is fantastic and it's always gonna look good. It gives you just enough, it doesn't feel like it's too much or too thin. So we just wanna thank you guys for watching. We really hope this is helpful. The next video we're gonna do is gonna be about creative matting. We're gonna get into some more math, more complicated things you can do with matting, but that will show off kind of your artistry and have more of a design feel to them. So make sure to like and subscribe so that when we drop that video, you'll get notified. All right, thanks so much.